Well, today we're learning that President Biden's legal team found another batch of classified documents. A source saying these documents came in searches that began after the November discovery of the classified docs from President, or now President Biden's time as vice president in an old office in Washington, D.C. So the question really is, what does this mean for the president? How are we just now learning about this? And also the DOJ going forward. Joining me now, CNN Special Correspondent Jamie Gangel, CNN Senior Law Enforcement Analyst Andrew McCabe, and CNN Legal Analyst Elliot Williams. I'm glad you're all here, and I bet we have similar questions as to who, what, when, where, the question of who knew what, when, why. But I want to begin with you, Jamie, because... The answer is, <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> well, there we go. That ends the segment today. Thank you for watching CNN. No, but seriously, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind around some of the reporting that's come in over the last 24 hours, even in a statement in Mexico City. And there were, what, 40 boxes that were handed over and an abundance of caution from the first batch we learned about. Right. It doesn't necessarily add up about the 10 classified docs or not, whatever, whatever level they were. But are these new batch? Is this from a different location? Or is that part of those 40 boxes that was handed over? A different location. And let's just call it an undisclosed location mm -hmm. uh, at the moment. The first location was his office, part of the Biden Penn Center, that had been sitting there for several years. Uh, these boxes were locked up. My understanding is 99% of what was in that office was personal. It included things like uh, the burial arrangement documents for Bo Biden's funeral, boxes of condolence letters that had been sent to him as vice president. And that's why his personal lawyer was going through it, because they thought it was all personal and confidential. And then that lawyer gets to a box, he opens it up, there's a folder marked VP personal, not unimportant. He opens that up. It says classified. He closes it again, and he calls the White House counsel. He says, Houston, we have a problem. They say, call the National Archives. Uh, in that first batch, there were about four boxes that they found that seemed to be different from all the other 36 personal boxes, and those had both those 10 classified documents mm -hmm. And then other documents that were unclassified but fall under the Presidential Records Act. Sorry for the long explanation. No, it's exactly <laughs> what we need to hear because it sounds like, one, there's different locations, Andrew, and um, where things are, but also an abundance of caution to then just say, here you go, here's the whole kit and caboodle. Right. Of course, the issue, and there are many issues here, um, is are, are people giving President Biden a pass on the idea of, look, this happens. This is not the response people had for the former president, Donald Trump. Of course, the big distinction here is how one behaved once they were aware of it. Is that a distinction that you think should be highlighted more? It's a very significant distinction, mm -hmm. and particularly in the context of the investigation that will follow. So is he getting a pass? No, I don't believe he's going to get a pass. He's going to be investigated, and I would uh, opine likely by a special counsel. There's already been a U.S. attorney out of Illinois, a Trump holdover right. appointee, who That's has right. given a report. That's right. And at this point, I think the attorney general would be well advised to appoint a special counsel over this investigation of how uh, President Biden and his team handled these documents. That's a separate issue. Um, but uh, I think his the distinctions between how his he and his team have handled this and how President Trump and his lawyers handled the situation in Marlowe could not be uh, more distinct, right? It's, it's, it's night and day. It's an overabundance of caution, contacting uh, the archives immediately, having them come out the next day to recover all of the documents. There's no parsing of, well, you can look in this room and not in that room, or you can look in the doorway but not go in the boxes. They handed everything over. I think following in that caution, they are now searching other locations right. where documents could maybe have ended up as well. Contrast that to what's happening right now in the Mar-a-Lago case. You have the Department of Justice fighting it out with Trump's lawyers in court to try to hold them in contempt for failing to do exactly what the Biden team is doing right now, that is going out and searching other locations. You have the Trump team refusing to turn over the names of the two private investigators they hired to go out and do their own search, refusing to turn over the names of those investigators because they basically don't want the mm. department to know who they are. So very different reactions. There is a 
cooperation element, it's so, it's so important in here. But I, just so for the audience's perspective, yeah. is it all this co all that common? We're hearing about it in real time and so that's, that's of months about this. But the fact that there's, you know, in the law, we think about custodian of records yeah. and chain of custody. Is there really no one out there who is realizing that they're missing some of these top secret documents? How is this continuously happening? Yeah, I think the big picture point is that we just need a better system in the United States of tracking what happens with classified information after the term of not just a presidential administration, but after people leave government. Right. So as a general, that's the big picture thing that affects both of these presidents. Now, as to this question, it's a really important one that you asked, Laura, about is a pass being given to one party or another? And it's really important to focus on, at least with former President Trump, a federal judge had found that there was probable cause to believe that there would be evidence of a series of crimes, including number one, obstruction of justice, number two, removal or mutilation of documents, and three, mishandling of defense information. And then beyond that, there was the open question of the amount of time, the staggering amount of time over several months where the former president and with the aid of his lawyers was help, was allegedly frustrating the Justice Department's investigation into you this. You mean it's, the search warrant probable yeah, cause to outlined search this Mar -a -Lago. very thing. Yeah, outlined all of this. And so it's just apples and oranges here. Now look, we may find that President Biden and his attorneys are thwarting the investigation of the Justice Department, but that's simply not the case right now. And if that evidence were to emerge, of course the president the current president should be investigated, but that's just not the case. And I think this desire to make it uh, one side versus the other thing, you just can't do that to every case. And it's just not, not the case here. We are a society that draws yes. distinctions and analogies probably more often than yeah. we should. However, there were a lot of questions today. And here, just a, a couple of them that were asked and of the White House press secretary, Corinne Jean-Pierre, that she declined to answer. Who brought the documents to the office? Did Biden himself bring them? Why did it take so long to disclose the discovery to the public? Was the timing related to the midterm elections? Were there any other things found? Is there an audit underway? Was he briefed? When was he briefed? Why were the private lawyers doing this? A number of questions that she declined to answer because she cited an ongoing investigation. But that election part, the mm -hmm. when the people are finding out, that is going to be something that already has legs and might continue to run as he intends to run for the re-election campaign. Do you have a sense as to why they haven't gotten out ahead of this? I mean, from Monday to now, why not just say more? Look, I, I think the issue of why wait so long is a real issue that's gonna have political yeah. consequences for him. Uh, People don't like to hear this, but this is a gift to Donald Trump and the Republicans, and waiting so long is part of that gift. That said, maybe their reasoning is that they were cooperating with an investigation. I don't know, but the political fallout is what yeah. it is. I will say, I don't think there's much of a chance that Joe Biden carried these, you know, 40 <laughs> boxes here. <laughs> Uh, I have a source who's very familiar with the documents. For the record, he is a lifelong registered Republican, and he knows a lot about how these things are handled over the years. He thinks it was very likely an honest mistake. The real question today is, what are these other new documents right. that yeah. were found in these other locations? Your eyebrow raised at the thought of an honest mistake. Maybe the FBI within you was like, honest mistake? <laughs> what is no, this you say about no, an honest no. mistake? Go ahead. No, actually, <laughs> and, and Elliot can back me up on this, these sort of referrals from the National Archives or other places yeah. about the concerns about classified documents that may be outside of approved facilities, they come to the department and to the FBI all the time. And most of them are resolved without criminal charges. Uh, the Bureau's first uh, concern is to, to find out where is this stuff, let's get it back, mm -hmm. and to conduct an assessment as to whether or not there's been damage to national security. Have we compromised sources and methods? Do we need to move people? Do we need to remove technologies from places that they are helping us collect intelligence? Um, and once that's done, that's when you start thinking about, could it have been an honest mistake, i.e., do we not have enough evidence to prove the intent mm -hmm. to miss handle documents that's required under those uh, statutes. So there will be a time for all that, and all of these facts that you've mentioned are you know, going to be important. True. It, it's oh, true. We're going to come back to this point. It's important to hear all your perspectives. And of course, to remember that the reason we know about the search on Mar-a-Lago and the entire course of events between Trump and the archives is because Trump was the one to have said something about it. So maybe there was a, maybe a lesson learned and it's gone awry. Who knows?